As human beings, in our finite mind and concept of morality, ethics, and judgment, when we are wronged, we demand justice. Justice is simply the recourse for wrongs committed against us. We have our boundaries that we have set up as our law. When someone violates, we demand some level of retribution, even if it is an apology. As a nation, we are governed by a set of laws. When someone contravenes these laws, there are repercussions. Whether it may be a fine or probation or jail time, this innate desire to hold people culpable must be seen as a signal from a higher judge. If we, in our finite minds, with limited information about a person's heart, we demand justice, how much more should the infinite God demand justice? God is not limited as we are. He says in Jeremiah 17, 10, I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. There is no thought or feeling that is hidden from God. There is no motive, attitude, or intention that escapes the probing eyes of God. According to 1 Samuel 16, 7, we look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. God now sees and knows everything, and there is a record of every action and every deed that one day we'll have to give an account for. Hebrews 9, 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. When God reviews your life, what will he see? You see, on judgment day there will be no wrongful convictions because God sees the heart and knows the motive behind the actions of every man. On this day there will be no place for a lawyer to argue for the unrepentant sinner. All motives and actions will be called up and will be weighed in the scale of God's justice. Those who are found wanting will get their just reward, and those who have repented in the time allotted will receive their rewards as well. David declares in Psalm 7:11, God is a righteous judge, a God who displays his wrath every day. God's judgments are based on His righteousness. No one can contest His ruling because they are righteous. No one can question His justice because they are righteous. No one can appeal His sentences because they are righteous. The omniscient God will reveal all the deeds done in darkness. They will be brought to light. We must pay attention to the things we do and even more the things we think. Jesus declares in Luke 12, 2 through 3, nothing is covered up that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark shall be heard in the light, and what you have whispered in private rooms shall be proclaimed on housetops. This should make even the righteous tremble, let alone an unrepented person. We all have thoughts that will be brought into the light that we are not proud of. We have all whispered words that we would be ashamed to hear being said aloud. I know I have thought about things that I had no business thinking, and I am sure that you have also. This is why it is important that every person must live with the consciousness that their deeds and thoughts will be brought up to be accounted for. We must not be careless in how we live. God is watching. The thought that our deeds are being recorded cannot be overemphasized. Romans 2.5 Because of your stubbornness, and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath, when His righteous judgment will be revealed. There is a day designated by the righteous judge, and this day is not one that will favor unrighteousness. 
It is an appointed time. The Greek word kairos means it is fixed, and it has been decided beforehand. God will not change his mind. This is a day when our stubbornness will be brought into account. We are told that by being stubborn, we are storing up, making a deposit, and the withdrawal will be the vengeance of God. Luke 8, 17, For there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open. God's eternal light will shine on the misdeeds, the misbehavior, and the misconceptions of all. Now is the acceptable time to make a change of course. There is no repentance when the eyes are closed. The time to yield to God is now. The time to resist the lore of Satan is now. Now is the time to believe in Christ and to lay hold of eternal life. Now is the time to turn from darkness to light and to make our calling and election sure. The night comes when no man can work. As the tree falls, there it will lie. If we leave this world refusing to repent and believe, we will rise in the same condition on resurrection morning. For those who choose to repent, we are told just as people are destined to die once and after that to face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many. And he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. The second coming of Jesus is a gift of consolation for those who repented and yielded to his call. Come and follow me is the utterance of our Lord and Savior to us in this life. Are you waiting the second coming, knowing that God will usher you into his eternal bliss? Are you awaiting the day of retribution with the assurance that the consummation of your salvation is eternal joy? The truth of judgment can be found in Romans 2, God will repay each person according to what they have done. To those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. This is the glory of those who gloried in Jesus Christ. But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. Do not be lulled into thinking that God will allow our stubborn and self-seeking ways to go unpunished or unaccounted for. You will be called to answer before the great judgment seat of God. I will be called to give an answer before the great judgment seat of God. So I encourage you today, examine yourself, examine your love. How are you treating others? How are you treating your neighbor? How are you treating your wife? How are you treating your husband? Examine yourself. We are told love God with all our hearts. Examine yourself. Do you love him with your heart? Is he the number one love in your life? He said it clearly in his word. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. Examine yourself. What are you thinking about? Is your mind just filled with worldly lustful thoughts? Or is it full of the word of God? Examine yourself. It is better to examine yourself now than later. Is there a sin that you persist on committing and you refuse to let go of? You know the word of God and you know that this sin is against the word of God, yet you don't want to forsake it. You are choosing to be stubborn against the word of God and the word of God is God's law. It is his universe and he can, he has set his laws in his universe that we must abide by. I encourage you today, 
Examine yourself today.